We're doing this one mostly ASMR style, so bring along your big ass torque arms and let's go. Guys, welcome back to the channel. This one's going to be a little bit different, mostly because when I was reviewing the footage that I had from this particular build, I realized the audio was just kind of nice. But you might not feel that way, and that's totally fine. Just let me know in the comments. But I thought that this format was very fitting for this particular build. So mostly no talking, but I will be popping in here and there to give you some more context or commentary on things that I felt were interesting about this build. I'm also using a motor kit that I I have never used in any of my e-bike builds before so I'm very curious about the performance and hopefully this is something that I can recommend to others. Stick around to the end of the video when we take this thing out for a ride because that's where I'm going to be giving you all my thoughts on this particular kit, the frame, how it all went together, all those things at the end of this video. This is already way too much talking for an ASMR type video so without further ado please enjoy. This motor is kind of special because it has the controller embedded inside of it. This means you don't need to find a spot to mount your controller and all the wiring is already inside of it. So it's very neat and tidy. It just makes things a lot more convenient.
Do not forget to put on your freewheel spacer because if you do, your freewheel is going to be binding and stuck on your motor and you're going to have to drive to four different bike shops that are all out of stock of this very specific tool to remove your freewheel. I almost completed this build in one night, but I had to go home because this disc brake did not want to come off the old rim. One of the bolts got totally stripped off and it just would not come out of there. It took me about two hours, but I finally got it off. This battery bag is really cool. It looks like a hard case, but it's actually some really firm foam and therefore it is very easy to install and I think the aesthetics look really cool. I actually encountered two separate issues on this build. One of them you can see here is the error 10 and this makes it so your bike doesn't work at all. This is a communications problem, usually points to wiring. I double and triple checked all my wiring and everything was good so I'm not really sure why this was happening. The other issue I was having was with the display. As you can see, every time I remove my hand from the power button, the bike immediately turns off. So the only way you can use it is if you held on to the power button. Something is clearly wrong here. And as you can see, I'm still having the error 10, but both of these issues are making it so I can't ride my bike. I was eventually able to remedy both of these problems and the first one was with the cable. I found that one of the pins on the main connector right here was slightly misaligned so once I rebent that back into position everything was working fine and unfortunately for the display I had to get a replacement from the seller of the kit but they did it pretty quickly so I was really happy about that. Guys, I can't stress this enough. This is a matter of life or death. Do not ever ride your e-bike or any bike without multiple torque arms. Make sure they're attached to the motor casing itself. This is going to prevent the motor from spinning, which is the safest way for you to ride your bike without it moving. Don't forget to put one on your handlebars. Otherwise, it's going to fly off, hit somebody in the head, and they're going to be really sad. Torque arms prevent e-bike fires. They also make it so no one can ever steal your e-bike. They also go beyond that and make sure that no one on the internet can ever hurt your feelings, no matter how sarcastic they are. Torque arms are the only thing that can ever keep you truly safe.
After riding this for a while, I'm happy to report that this build is actually very nice and it is something that I would recommend. I do want to stress to you from somebody that has built a ton of more budget-oriented e-bikes that the Schwinn platform and frame for building an e-bike is highly recommended as the build quality and materials feel so much nicer than the other Hyper and Kent and other Walmart slash Target style brands. They don't even cost all that much more but the quality is definitely noticeable. It's not going to be like a Trek or Specialized, but for a steel frame, this is a good recommendation. One thing I was concerned about was heat because a controller produces heat on its own and so does a hub motor. So if you stuff the controller inside of the hub motor, you would think everything would just be a lot hotter. But I was pleasantly surprised after running this for a while. Here I am touching it just fine and it actually felt cold. So whatever they're doing with this setup, it seems to be working working pretty well. This is a 1500 watt hub motor kit from Jaopay and I've actually bought quite a few of their kits before mainly because they are offering some of the least expensive kits that have nice features such as a display. If you look at a lot of the other 1500 watt kits out there you'll notice that they're just about the same price except they don't include a display and to me the value is just there. They also helped me out when I did have an issue with the display and they were very prompt about it. So yeah, I am not sponsored by them in any way. I'm just telling you about my personal experience and they are a manufacturer I would recommend. Now, what about this particular kit with the controller embedded in the motor? Is that one I would recommend? And that was a question I had for myself. That's why I bought this kit. That's why I'm making this video. And the answer is yes, I would recommend this kit and the reasons are because for one it is much more convenient you don't need a spot to mount your controller because that's not even there anymore and also the wiring is much simpler there's less wires and the wiring that is used is much more convenient all this makes it a lot more easy to install and it also looks a lot cleaner when you're done with your build which is always a good thing now on to the downsides one of them I thought was gonna be a big problem was heat output but as it turns Turns out this thing runs very cool so that was not an issue at all. So the first downside if you can even call it that is that this build only and I air quote that goes 30 miles per hour. A lot of the other 1500 watt kits out there that have separate controllers will go to 34 miles per hour so if that 4 miles per hour is a make it or break it for you that's going to be a downside. To me going 30 miles per hour on a bicycle is already scary fast so adding another 4 it doesn't really feel all that much faster and honestly it's not really a big deal at least in my opinion. The only downside to this build from my perspective is the fact that the controller is embedded in the motor. This is going to make it harder to troubleshoot and also repair if it needs it down the line. I don't think this kit is particularly for me but that's only because as you guys know I am way more into the nitty gritty and DIY of e-biking. If I was just a casual user then to me this is definitely the way to go to have the controller embedded in the motor it just makes a lot more sense especially if you just want a more simplified e-bike to get you from a to b if you want to do all kinds of crazy modding and stuff like that i would obviously recommend something with a separated controller maybe a programmable controller but for most of the people that are going to be riding e-bikes Honestly, this is the way to go. Oh, I forgot to mention the battery. This is a Haylong 20 amp hour pack and I've bought quite a few different 20 amp hour packs and they're always about twice as big physically as this one. So I'm not sure how they're doing that. I don't believe they're lying because this is a reputable brand, but still it was kind of shocking to me to see how small this pack actually was. We all know range can vary greatly depending on who's riding and where they're riding, but I would say anywhere between 20 and 40 miles is definitely doable so I think that's pretty good for this setup. This build turned out to be a very nice e-bike. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It looks really cool. It goes really fast. It goes pretty far. I just I'm really happy with it and it's definitely a platform I would recommend towards others if they're looking to DIY an e-bike on their own. This is a really cool kit. It gives you a lot of features and it's much more convenient than dealing with a controller so I would definitely recommend it thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one